screen, rejoins us. We've got Kelsey Cottrell in commentary with us, and we are all set and ready for the first of our quarterfinals. It is Exodus up against Geelong. They finished on top of uh, Section A. Kelsey Cottrell, uh, as we look at Team Exodus coming out, and we'll get the first look at who's going to be representing them. We can see Aaron Sheriff there. What impresses you about this lineup? Uh, look, two really great mates, know each other's games back to front, and have played a lot together in New South Wales. And um, as Chris said, they've, they've been a good combination here already, winning three games together. Uh, and what about the Geelong side? We'll uh, get to them in just a moment as uh, Team Exodus do a little lap, getting the encouragement from Barry Lester, a couple of high fives. Yeah, I don't think there'll be any surprises with the Geelong um, side. I think you'll see the same uh, lineup as we saw in the preliminary final. And that was obviously that close 70 uh, 68 victory. And once again, we see Ray Pierce there with uh, Harley McDonald. And Harley was uh, really setting things up uh, with his touches. And Big Razor, uh, he'll grow an inch every time he draws a toucher, that's for sure. Uh, Nathan Bush, he's the third player uh, of that team, and he's from Deer Park. Uh, Kelsey, the finesse and the clutch bowling of Ray Pierce was phenomenal in their uh, preliminary final win against the Cyclones. Yeah, I mean, I think it was the second last end. I was peering around the corner and, it, you know, it looked like a massive target to just go and belt it. And he went up and played like the most perfect shot, just trailing the jack around the corner. And it was a bit of a heartbreaker for, for Darwin. So, yeah, look, he's capable of playing all the shots, um, as are most of the players here, which is what makes it such a great event. After the first end, Exodus got the 10 points for having the first shot. So 14 to 10. Geelong after one end, so it's uh, nice and tight to begin this quarterfinal matchup. Yeah, apart from the um, Warilla game, it's it's been pretty tight all round, hasn't it? Like mm. uh, we saw Flemkem obviously with their first end of their uh, prelim, they jumped out of the gates, but um, apart from that, it's been pretty tight all the way along. So, Greeny, tell us about a bit more about Matt Bouse. What's uh, what's his journey been like? Uh, Bouncy's always been in sort of the Newcastle area. Mm. Um, he, New South Wales junior champion, uh, New South uh, Wales Open uh, champion. Uh, he's played, num played a number of games for New South Wales. Uh, I think he was actually leading up for, um, for Sheriff in the state side for, for a number of years. Um, he's just an ultimate competitor and uh, he's at the Raymond Terrace uh, Bowls Club. Uh, so he works there. Uh, so he's plenty of opportunities to get involved. And he's um, just he's just a, a great bloke too, you know. You're hard pressed to find uh, someone who's not a, a good person uh, in mm -hmm. the bowls world. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a real community sport, mm -hmm. uh, and you you talk about all your members and stuff like that. It's just like a family. All your all your little clubs they've got their own little families, and then when you get together, and you're seeing people so regularly as well, uh, and you're always getting that chance to catch up and. Because of the social side as well, uh, people always are getting along. Yep. It's a great atmosphere here with all the players as well. They're all hanging around to watch, even the ones that have been knocked out or the ones that have, you know, don't have to play for another couple of games. They're hanging around to, to watch because, mm. yeah, they're all mates. And, and I think as well, they... You know, the players genuinely want events like this or you know any event that they go to to be a success you know to be a success and you want to see heaps of people in the grandstands heaps of people coming to watch so it's, yep. it's great that they're all you know hanging around the green and um and creating that atmosphere and and getting behind the players just out to a 10 point lead geelong harley mcdonald getting the touch such a good feeling as a lead to draw a toucher with your last ball because you're getting six points. You yeah, know, how yeah. often does a lead get to go, oh, yeah, I scored six, <laughs> scored six shots. <laughs> so are you telling me this whole format's just been introduced to just help the egos of leads? I think so. I think we just like, <laughs> yeah, we just get, we get forgotten a little bit, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's all about fair the skippers. Enough. So, you yeah, know, this is great. <laughs> Throw your first two balls. Now that last one, yeah. great feeling. Six shots in the bag. Well, we saw Dane McKinnon, <laughs> uh, two touches yeah. in his first two leading off in the the last of the preliminary finals. Well, I can tell you, if we're talking touches, there is a golden touch award, so the person who scores the most touches throughout sectional play. So that'll be presented. Uh, the golden touch will be presented uh, at the presentations right at the end. But to give you a little bit of an idea, uh, Harley McDonald, he had 20 touches at the completion of sectional play. Wow. Uh, and he was equal ninth out of 66 players. Whoa. So he was averaging two a game. And, and he's equal ninth. Yeah, well, he actually only played seven games. Oh, so right. he's almost averaging three a game. Yeah. 
There we go. A touch up. Marin Sheriff. Have you, uh, have you had a look at any of the stats, Kels, that you can, you we, can access? We did actually briefly have a look because we were a bit undecided at what lineup we were going to go with yep. for today's final. So we actually used the stats to make that final decision. It's hard, um, uh, I suppose, as well for for our you know for our team. We've got you know Andrew and I playing, so we kept saying to Carl, you know, you've got to make the decision. We can't make a decision like this because <laughs> how do fights you two in go, the household. Yeah. <laughs> how do you two go playing together? <laughs> Um, yeah, really well actually. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people ask that. We're two pretty chilled out people. Um, yeah. Don't don't bicker or anything like that. Yeah, we've, we've played a lot together over the years, whether it's been pairs or um, we've, we've, whether we've been in the same club and played on the same rink together in, in Premier League and, and stuff like that. So you know, we actually play really good together. Pretty handy mixed pairs team. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got a couple of mixed pairs titles. <laughs> uh, Kelsey Cultural in commentary with us. The partner Andrew Howie, two out of the three they make up are the Weeper Crocs who were knocked out in the prelims. But the great thing about this UBC format, Kelsey, is there's two other events to go. They're spread over two days, uh, ten sectional games, you get a bye, uh, and then the uh, the teams that go through get the chance to compete for the prize money. But you get three opportunities uh, across this tournament. Yeah, we're excited to be able to you know back up again over the next few days and see what we can do. We've learnt a lot from this first one and um, we're sort of Got a bit of a, an idea of some different tactics that we can take in. A great shot there from Razor. He just thrives on those situations. Last ball, last end. It seems to be Ray Pierce time, doesn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. He, he loves um, he loves that opportunity to make a difference, you know. And um, the big moments. So this is a pretty healthy lead. Kelsey, 38-16, but start of the third end, so there's still plenty of bowls to come. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, never going to ride a team off. Yeah, you're, um, you'd be doing well to ride a team off here, wouldn't you, Kelsey? <laughs> Especially with so many um, scoring opportunities. And as we see Ooh, there, there there's go. a touch-up. Normally we'd be disappointed with that. We've sliced him. We're still one down, but yeah. at least, you know, you know he's... You know, Matty Bass has added three points to their score, so every little bit helps. So, Sam, if we go back to those stats that I was asking yeah. Kelsey about. So, with the um, with the technology we've got with the UBC, it, all the every bowl is inputted uh, into the tablet. So even after that bowl, it would simply be orange, blue, orange, no toucher. So every single bowl, the uh, marker input stuff, and it gives us the real time scores and the updates on the TVs and obviously on our screen as well. What that then provides. Oh, so close oh, to a shot. second toucher in consecutive bowls. It's made shot though. It breaks it up into each player so that the players are inputted before the start so they know who's lead and who's skip. Yep. So it gives the um, the franchises, the players, the coaches, managers, uh, it gives them the combination overviews, but also it gives it obviously how many games they've played, their effective toucher rate, how many mm. touches they've got. Um, there's a probably a list of about 15 to 20 different stats. Uh, it's just quite incredible that it, it's all just comes from the markers putting the input into the tablets. And Kelsey, you'd be able to tell us that the use of analytics uh, at the moment, as I just actually clicked out of the uh, Jackaroos page, but new coaching structure at the Jackaroos, analytics is becoming more and more a big part of what the Australian national side are, are looking towards to try and find that competitive edge when we've got com games around the corner and, um, you know, international bowls, uh, other countries really breathing down our necks. Yeah, we've had, um, we've had stats for a while now, probably a bit longer than people realise. It was yeah. something that we, as an Australian team, were doing to try and get that edge over other countries. Um, so yeah, we've done it for a little while, but yeah, over the last couple of years, we've really started to um, to push forward with it and get some really good data out of it. And I personally love it. Um, I love reading into all that kind of stuff and, and going into a game really prepared, knowing what's working well, what's not working well. Um, so yeah, great. I love it. <laughs> yeah, any little advantage you can get is a bonus, isn't it? Yeah. Well, as I said, like it definitely helped us come up with that. You know, who was going to play, and you know, we we just looked at it and straight away. Um, 
you know, Andrew and I both played five games each and mm. Andrew and Carl had one more games together. Um, so we just straight away went, right, your combination's working better in this event. Let's just go for it. And also the fact that the two games that I had lost with Carl were on this rink. So it was great to um, to just go, no, like I'm definitely going better on rink one, two, three. You're going better on four and five and you guys are better as a combo. So, and the stats just really backed that up and made it um, easier to make that decision based on the stats instead of having to make those personal kind of yeah. decisions. Yeah. So the door's right open here for Aaron Sheriff. Just needs to settle. And he's going to settle. Oh, just left it a little, little mm. long. I'd suggest that'll be first, second, and third now. Yep. And that's been the update on the screen there. So there we go. So if you're looking at that scoreboard, you're new to the world of bowls, maybe even new to the UBC as well. So we're in the third end. This is the 11th bowl. 12 bowls in total each end. It's a good track for Razor. Definitely nothing for wide with this shot, as you can just see. Yeah, like a touch more weighty would have got the, the result in off that, but yeah. You can see the one, two, three there, meaning that the Exodus have one, two, first, second, and third shot. See, most people would probably go, right, we've got the three, let's just throw off. But yeah. Aaron Sheriff's sure probably thinking, I can draw a side toucher here and score another three. <laughs> Well, Kelsey, what did you predict a side toucher? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he <laughs> has not Just a couple missed of by much. So that's a massive end, and they take the lead. They were trailing 16 to 38 going into that end, and the Exodus are now with a 40 to 38 lead. Their nose is just in front with two ends to play. Kelsey, it, it, there's two sides to this. It's not only the points you score, but it's the points you don't allow your opposition to score. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, ideally, as a lead, you want to get right in front of that jack. So not only have you got the shot, but you're actually making it really hard for your opponent to draw a toucher as well. So the lead off there for Matt Bouse. And you can hear the crowd getting into this, and you can enjoy better hearing with Audica. If you're over 26, book your free hearing check today at Audica. That's A-U-D-I-K-A.com.au. Love your ears. Harley McDonald's now. That's right on line. Yeah, very handy opener there. And look at the score, guys. 40-38, just two points in it. That's just one simple bowl. A toucher. And the great thing about the scores being really close is less thinking involved. <laughs> when you're chasing 10 yeah. or you're trying to defend, you know, 10, 12, you're like, oh gosh, first, third touches. There's so much going on, but um, that's what makes it exciting. So the winner of this quarter final will go on to play the winner of the North Queensland Roos and Warilla quarter final in the semi. I hope North Queensland weren't watching that game earlier. <laughs> We, I mean, what are you hoping for there? Well, they can't bowl that well two games in a row, but these are two guys um, that people are saying could very easily yeah. be the, the Com Games pairs. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I've seen them bowl like that, you know, like yeah. uh, for weeks on end. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, too, North Queensland, they've been realistically one of the surprise packets oh. of Event 1. Yeah. Um, so in the previous instalments of the UBC, you've had players, uh, Brett Wilkie uh, and Shannon McElroy, two world champions in the same side, in that side, mm. and they haven't got the success that they've got in those last two days. So the, the guys are just on a roll. Uh, big Damien, uh, he's really enjoying <laughs> it, and I think he's he's just loving the fact that he's uh, he's skipping, uh, and he's he put in a lot of effort in prior to uh, the event, so you, you just never know. So Geelong with first shot, now they'll finish up with an extra three points. So they go back into the lead. Lead shot means that at the halfway mark after the lead bowlers have had their three, if you've got shot, then it's three points to your team. Now the skipper's in action. Aaron Sherriff first for Exodus. Can uh, Exodus break the old blue bowl hoodoo for the finals night? This is this is analytics going even to the next yes. level. We're, we're even telling you what colours are dominating at the moment. Well, this is nice. a good shot here. Just oh, nestle in yeah. there. Thank you very much. That's a great shot. And 
absolutely had to give that a chance. Even if he missed, he had to get something past. It's probably the only time those orange short bowls are going to come in handy uh, with this is because they're sort of just blocking the big weighted shot. Well, it's given it's Has given a nice target for Aaron Sheriff on his next. So well, if, if you Ray Pierce here, are you trying to close the door, land one in front, Kelsey, or? Well, I, I think it he probably... flicked it in. Ray's is not it's overly not. impressed. But uh, I think Omar flicked his, uh, that bowl of bouncies in for shot. So, yeah, it didn't look like it at first, but no. there's actually more of a gap between yeah. the jack and those orange ones that, that we first thought. But yeah, so they do have shot Exodus that changes everything. It does <laughs> now, it makes those short ones a bit of a nuisance for Geelong. Yeah, trying to, trying to get access to that blue one. So, first and shot is 10 so points, now. second shot, five points, third shot, three points. A toucher is three. The UBC, the ultimate bowls championship. Sam Hargraves, Chris Green, joined by Aussie Jackaroo, Kelsey Cottrell in commentary. So it's forced him to change. So he's just got to get down to the inside of the blue. This Looks pretty close. good, A little bit of the this jack as well. This is very close. Oh, too much of the jack. Too much. But if he was... He's got the toucher, touch so he's yeah. got the three points, so that does help. So it does help because he was one down anyway, so at least he scored an extra three out of it. Well, it'd be interesting, though, to see who got the third shot there, whether it was... Well, that's right. If you moved it too far, yeah. it is probably, it could be It'll worse be another off. another three shots, yeah. <laughs> well, this is exactly what we want, isn't it? I mean, for the, the second match in a row, we are turning for home with very little separating the two teams. Just a two-point margin in the first of the semi-finals. Last end. Pretty good start here from Balsi. But the door's still open for Harley. He's been going good, especially in this direction. So he's coming forehand. Do you have a preference the way you like to open? Forehand, backhand? Um, you mix it up? Yeah, mix it mix it up. Um, probably depending on what rink you what rink I'm on. Um, probably this event's one one where I've kind of thrown out the normal coaching kind of <laughs> or you know, the manual that's going on flipping yeah. through my head. And normally, you know, as a lead, I would just stick to one side, even if there's a bowl in the way. I'm like, no, nah, it doesn't matter. Just just keep piling um, bowls in there for your skipper. But this format, if a bowl gets in your way, I've been changing and actually really trying to chase that jack. Um, so normally, yeah, I will probably in a traditional format wouldn't do that. Are you noticing a particular, is, it, is either end got a bit more pace than the other? Um, I don't, it's hard to tell, like this morning I come out and it felt quicker. See a bit of an aggressive shot, shot here. Go. That's very good. Got the shot. Got the toucher. Showing his versatility so that's there. A bit of aggression from Harley McDonald. Yeah, sometimes you're not sure if it's because you've just, you know, first game. If you haven't had a roll up, you kind of chuck your first couple down. Good shot here from Bowsey. Oh. Very good. So it's Geelong great. had. First and second shot, and that from Matt Bouse gives the exit gives Exodus shot, trailing by five. Well, he swapped over here. He'd be hunting down on the, the forehand, and there's nothing for short here. You can land the bowl, trailer jack. This is another one of those ones where Kelsey's talking about the potential of getting six points. So it'll be three points to Exodus, 53 there on now, 55 Geelong. Well, these two are going to decide who sits down for the rest of the night and who progresses through to the semi-final. And it'll be the first into the semi-final. Might nearly be a case of whoever can trail this jack around the corner first. Absolutely. Might just about close the door. Yeah, especially if they take the option of drawing touches away from the other team as well. Oh, there we go. That's a couple of big time deliveries. Well, that's a big time delivery from Aaron Sheriff. They've got first and second now, Kelsey. Yeah, and just a little bit of coverage too. Like Razor can only see a, a tiny bit of the jack now. 
So he needs to just give it a chance and try and change something up because his head doesn't look great for him, I would imagine, from the map. Only being able to see like millimeters yeah. of that jack. It's not a big window, is it, with the with the front left blue bowl if you're looking at them down the green. Closes the window just a little bit more. Yep, so it looks like it's going to be a bit of aggression here. Just got to open something up to give himself a chance with his last ball. Oh, wow. That was all teed up for a rape here special. He's got one more to come though, Kelsey, so not all hope is lost. The angle's still there too. So if you're Aaron Sheriff now, what's, what's the tactic? Oh, I think he might have to run for cover. But I need to probably have another look at this head. You know, Ray's going to be trying to plow through those orange ones and try and get a result. Clear road here is pretty handy. Yeah, so he's sort of thought, uh, so he's obviously thought maybe the two bowls can go. If Ray gets onto that front, the middle orange one on the line there and, mm. and manages to whip those two blue ones out of there. So here we go, just two points separating these two teams. The first of our semi-finals. This is the first event of the three-event tournament at the UBC. Ray Pierce, it all hinges on this. He's under, I think. Oh, no, he's not. He's got the jack. He's got the touch. Ray Pierce has just won it for Geelong off the last bowl. So the toucher in the ditch must have been the closest. Of the last end of the first of our quarterfinals. What a moment that is. Ray Pierce, who dug him out of a hole in the preliminary final win against the Cyclones. Off the last bowl, they get through 71 to 58 against the Exodus. So let's get down to Chris Green with our winners. Quite interesting uh, bit of gambling uh, music's come on because you took a bit of a gamble there at the end there, Razor. You had a couple of options. You back cut the jack, but you run through. Uh, look, I mean, things are really starting to heat up here at Dandong Club. You've just played against probably one of the in-form sides at uh, the event. You came through the preliminary finals. You're now through the quarterfinals. Your first team to book a spot in the semi-final. Feeling confident? Yeah, it was always going to be a tough one against uh, Biasi and uh, Omar, two class players, not only in the country, but in the world. And um, look, we hung in there. We dropped a really bad end. I think it was the third end uh, to make it even, Stephen, and give them an ultimate end. Uh, but Biasi and, and Harley had a really good battle up front. Uh, and then it come down to the last bowl, as you'll probably see for the rest of the night as well. So it's, it's good to see. And Harley, you must be very happy with the way you're leading. Uh, touches, I'm not going to give away too much, but uh, unfortunately you didn't get the golden touch wall, but you were right up there. And that was with 20 touches from your seven games throughout the sectional play. Uh, over the last two games, the preliminary final and the quarter final, continue getting cut touches. It's quite important for the score, obviously building with three. But personally, you're very happy with your way you're playing? Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, it's, it's the goal to get the touches, you know what I mean? The extra points for your team and you try and build off that, uh, winning the end if you get a toucher. So, yeah, no, stoked with how it's going and hopefully we can keep it going now. Uh, very good. Uh, look, see, there's a lot of love, a lot of love with these two boys. And it's great to see them joining Tarrant Point Bowling too, uh, might I add. Uh, boys, what are you going to do now? Are you going to watch any of the bowls or are you going to have a meal or are you going to sit back and relax? Yeah, we'll probably just chill out a bit, but uh, just a, a shout out to all the Geelong Clippers uh, sponsors and owners. Uh, it's all for you guys. Yeah, thank you. Uh, beautiful boys, good luck in the semi-final. As I said, you're the first team booked in there. There's going to be three more quarterfinals. They're all looking to try and get into the semis. We're going to be coming up with plenty more action straight away. Over to you, Sam. Nicely done, Chris Green, and what a performance from the Geelong Clippers. They get through to the semi-finals. They'll play the winner of the next quarter-final, the North Queensland Roos. So great to have our next special guest commentator, Nathan Bush, with us as Chris Green rejoins us in commentary, and we are all set and ready for the next of our quarter-finals. Really looking forward to this matchup. First team that's coming out, Chris Green, is the North Queensland Roos. There's big Damien McGee. He's the team owner. Uh, and look, he's a very, very positive man. And, and joining him is Johnny Newell. Uh, he's, the, he's the chairman of uh, Premier League Queensland. And Mark Armstrong, who I, who I spoke of, who, uh, who joins the team uh, after Stephen Tong was selected in the draft, but unfortunately couldn't play. So, so they're your North Queensland Aussie Cool Roos and really looking forward to seeing them continue on their winning ways. Let's welcome them out. They qualified second and they take on the Gorilla Gorillas. 
Yeah, once again, Aaron Tease, just a star. I think the whole team just star-started. Aaron Tease, though, on fire, leading up. And Corey Wedlock, he skipped there. Normally, he'd be leading up for Teasy, but one of the stars of the Australian circuit. And Jeremy Henry, King Henry from Northern Ireland, now uh, living in Australia, playing at Warilla Bowls Club and winning World Cups for Australia. The Warilla Gorillas, it's going to be impressive to see if they can produce that wow factor like last game. And here they are as we welcome them out. They look comfortable, they look confident, they look relaxed. Nathan Bush, what did you make of that performance of them in the preliminaries? That was as dominant a performance as we've seen. Absolutely. Uh, I actually thought before they went into the finals, it was a little bit of a dip, indifferent sort of uh, lineup, to be honest. Um, one outside the box, but the way they executed was incredible. Uh, if they keep bringing that, they're going to be very, very hard to beat. they'll be watching and we're wishing them all the best good to see that your team Jess and Norm are through to the semi-finals now we've got the second quarter final on the line here Corey Wedlock and Aaron Tease and Teasy getting things off and running for the second end Marilla with a 15-9 end uh, lead after the first end that was a big time delivery from Corey Wedlock to set that up. Great shot. Good response from John Newell. I think John's the only one to come out forehand round the clock um, strategically in the finals as a lead player, so we'll watch that. Teasy had played them in the preliminary final, we'd be looking to see if someone replaced the Aaron Tease that was out there because didn't have many bowls outside of a, a foot in that preliminary final. And touches galore. Get back. It's like a very good follow-up. Very good. Does he get the yeah. touch up? Is it? Oh. Leaning. It's Just can't quite see it. Unlucky. You'd be back in Teasy to do something here. Yeah. He's after it. Purposeful walk. Following this one in. It's on a nice line too. He has played what it. What a and shot. And gets the toucher as well to give them shot. First shot for a Willa. It was paying a dollar one. <laughs> An 18 to 9 lead now for the Gorillas. Three good bowls here from John. Old yes, Doge. and a toucher yeah, well as well. Done. Doge. You'd say it's still a Rilla, but they're just the ability to keep racking up, racking up points is crucial yep. in this one, Nathan Bush. Absolutely. Look, that toucher nullifies the the lead shot uh, for Marilla. So um, great bowl. 21-12 now. Halfway through the second end. This is Corey Wedlock. Now, surely there's a, a good nickname for Corey Wedlock to do with marriage. You know, <laughs> in, out of wedlock. Yeah. We, has someone worked on something there for us? I think he's got a couple of nicknames. Big Bear is one of them. Big Bear. Neck. Yeah, I have heard that. Neck. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh he's oh, almost got back to the jack there. Very close. Well, well, Damien McKee. I think that's a big thing now. Corey's really got to try and get to that blue bolt. It's just past Jack High there. The second shot. He's just giving a little hurry up. Even if he slides through here, it's a good yeah. ball in the area there. Might have snuck in for third shot. So, Nathan, your bowls journey, where did it begin? You, As I mentioned before, that uh, you won the state singles championship in 2019, beating Barry Lester. He's got, he's got better weight here. He's got it. Oh, what a shot. 
That's a game changer there. What a ball. Had the three, plus the ten, plus the five. Big ball here, Chris. As we see it coming down, you, you picked it right too because it was just that just slight correction with his weight. You give him the chance to get back there. Huge bowl, especially with only one bowl left from Corey here. He said should be close. So literally a meter out of his hand, he said should be close. This is, this is connecting. Outstanding. No, outstanding. short. What? Do they get outstanding. shot? This is a phenomenal quarterfinal that we're seeing unfold here. High caliber bowls from both teams. Trading blows early. How good's that? He said literally it was not even passed up. Yeah, good lip and reading. He said it's close. So the final bowl of the second end. It's got reaching weight. He gets, he gets through Is his he own here. He can get that up, onto the orange. Up. Oh, that's He's brilliant. Done enough. What an end. Absolutely brilliant. And well said, Nathan Bush. What an end. Crowd rising to get involved in this one as well. Uh, that was phenomenal. Now 28 to 26 lead after two ends for North Queensland. Bushy. Yeah, I've always been from Geelong. I uh, started off my bowls at a, at a smaller club, uh, Drum Condra, uh, and then moved on to Geelong West. Um, played some bowls at Mooney Ponds in the Melbourne Metropolitan League, uh, and then went to Eastern Park uh, back in Geelong, and then uh, just recently last year went to Deer Park as head coach. And what are your higher aspirations? Oh, look, for me, it's a little bit different. Um, obviously, my work career comes first, um, so for me, for the bowls, and, and this is a big part of the reason of Harley playing, um, was particularly for where he's at at the moment. It's, it's great to have him on the main stage. Uh, 28 years of old, 28 years of age, um, and this is where he needs to be to um, to go that next step. So when you say your career comes first, um... yeah, look, I, I work at a, a special school in Geelong, and I'm an assistant principal, so. Oh, brilliant. I, I can't take the, the, the time off required to play that high, higher end of bowls. That's why events like these are, are so great, though. They give you a chance to be playing against the very best in Australia and indeed it. the world. Oh. Here you go. John Newell, a toucher. 31 to 26 lead now. So it's, starting, it's just starting to get interesting now. Isn't it? And you can, as I said before, the crowd will tell you where the state of play is because they. They go quiet, they know the state of play. And this is why this format of the game is so good. It only takes one bowl, a front knocker, and all of a sudden all that pressure goes on the opposition. Uh, and you only need three a game, and that could really set you up to win. It's not going all their own way and you wouldn't expect that either from obviously a team which has finished second in their section so they've, they've been one of the top consistent performers over the last day and a half it's gonna be tough to get shot from here to get that three points for lead shot it's just gonna give a little assist so another three points going to the ruse so they're out by eight yeah, I think we'll see a bit of weight here. I think it's time to make something happen for themselves here, Barilla. Bit of regression, you're thinking? Yeah, I think they need to change something up. Even though they get the front orange out of the way, there is a chance he can get through the hole there to get the shot bowl. Greeny, I've got to ask you, with your, your pointers out, uh, surely the Clippers come your second pick, is that right? Oh, 100%. Great. 100%. Great. Fair shot here as well. His weight's good. He's just going to hang a bit high. Just reckon it's a good, well, it's a good bad yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's one of those things you, you're always trying to get past it because it does create further angles. I mean, here's that weight you were talking about. Bushy. Here we go. Really attacking down here. You just need some connection. No connection. Still plenty to play out in this end, though. And I think this is part of the strategy that they've done the last two days. Uh, in instead of covering the spot, they've just attacked. 
Mm. Um, and it's worked for him. This is going to just posse up short. So the UBC, three events. Each event separated out over two days. The sectionals on day one and the last of the sectionals on the second day. And then we bringing you the finals. And they have delivered in spades at the moment. This is the second of the semi-finals, North Queensland and Marilla. Half a million dollars almost in prize money up for grabs over these three events. You work off that and get in there for a very yeah, good second up. shot. That's it. Minimising the damage now. I think if you, if you can't get shot, you get second and third. But you've got to land points, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, the ability to have second and third shot, you're only really dropping two points uh, on the end. And with the firepower they have, they'd, they'd back themselves. So Damien McGee now. Can he just slip that in behind? And it's only just by coat of paint missed out on a toucher. We're going to see here, Bushy. This is the final bowl of the end. The Ruse 34, we're at 26. Ruse currently holding a 10 point shot. Yeah, look, I think it's a conservative shot. I think it's a draw on the forehand, to be honest. If you get back, you get back. Um, but I reckon they'll back themselves in the last end. Yeah, out on the forehand. So they're not looking to make a big move here, are they? Mm. I mean, he's, he's a chance. I'll tell you what. It's going to be some shot if you can get this. I tell you what. He falls oh, over. Oh, goodness He's me. Yes. That is phenomenal from Corey Wedlock. Honestly, what a shot. What a shot. Double high five from the boys there. And that's just brilliance. Absolute peach. He's just got to make that correction with his line. This is a huge three points here from lead position. Uh, and no one teasy. He'll be after the six with a toucher. He's looking good. Well, I've almost called that bushy. But you're right. That's, it. That's what it's all about. Giving yourself the opportunity to score and you reach the jack. Yeah, this is where I reckon it's important for John to reach here as well. Even if he gets past, he can have a real crack with his last one. Oh, he's played it well. Well, if you're missing, that's where you want to be missing. Yeah, good bowls. Sam Hargraves, Chris Green, and we're joined by a rotating cast of stars coming through the middle chair. Nathan Bush with us from the Geelong Clippers at the moment. And we are being treated in this second quarterfinal matchup. He needs a little feather off that to hurry up, but no, he gets past it. It's only a sh slight correction here, but it is a big bowl, especially if you can get a toucher out of it. I can tell you he's up. Yeah, there's a real intent about the now we break into the jog from John Newell. He's up. Probably didn't want that. Oh. Yeah. Just got big. We've got Corey Wedlock heading to the mat for Willow Grillers and big Damien McGee, the big man from the Aussie Cool Ruse. And nothing's impossible for him over the last two days. No, absolutely, and, and a big shout-out too uh, to their third player, Mark Armstrong, who's been incredible. Uh, he's been solid up, lead, up front from lead position. Um, he, he definitely won the game from up front against us. Corey Wedlock doesn't look wrapped with this. He's going to open it up. Yep. Oh. And he's going to provide a little bit of a wing there as well. We're building a little wall across the front there. There's an opening. Where's he going here? Well, he's, he's playing the perfect way. Oh, Brilliant. gets the shot out of it. That's, that's a gutsy decision and it's paid off. A trail by three. Corey Wedlock now. He's in the area. 
as he's threading this needle. Oh, wow. oh, incredible. This is a couple of heavyweight teams just trading blows at the moment, just landing their best punches. I think we need a heat check here for Corey. Wow. Probably just a touch on the high side. Bring no? him. Oh, oh, he was just a touch. But he got down quick, that ball too. A absolutely. But to lift that second shot up, gives him it widens the target yep. and also gives him a chance to trail the jack for three. Well, I think this is this ball's got to be the backest. Absolutely. Well, this is it. I've got shots one. I've got the first, second and third shots. At the moment, Warilla, it's been a phenomenal end, but it hasn't been a they haven't dominated Nathan Bush. They've had to they've had to trade blows as we mentioned with North Queensland to do it. No, it's gonna to be tough that there's a loser out of this game. Uh, all four players have done their bit. He needs the jack. Is he gonna play the finesse shot? He is. Is that a He likes big? it. He's close. He likes he told it. us it's close. This is gonna go close. This is going to go very close. He loves it. Oh, the touch-up. Good reason. <laughs> but they still concede first shot. They had to be brave. But the, what, the important thing is they're still in the match. You know, he misses that either side. Absolutely. And they drop the ultimate end, and that's pretty much game over. They're only two behind. Yeah, absolutely. We, we didn't um, think anything could top the third end. <laughs> and then we've just had that fourth end. Look, I, I said this, this is, is it because if he did miss, it was, it was curtains. Um, what a game. This is highlight after highlight at the moment. Aaron T's getting us going in the fifth and final end. Just two points separating these two sides. A spot in the semi-final to take on your Geelong side, Nathan Bush. Yeah, that's going to be amazing. Um, personally, I'm not very good at watching. Uh, there's been a few trips upstairs, and I'm do you not just very find good. a little quiet oh. place, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I think he'll stay on the back end. He's, he's yeah, he's he's been playing this way very well. He doesn't want to crash on his own. He's underneath that, fortunately. But once oh, again, just, just not reaching the jack. They've got first and third at the minute. Here's John Newell. A bit more weight on this. And this is the percentage play. Uh, this will give him a real chance with his last bowl. Uh, he, he can have options then. He can, he can run the jack. Uh, you can crash on the two front ones, but he just had to get that one past. Bushy, you played on this surface uh, at a similar sort of time um, a couple of weeks ago with the um, Victorian or Melbourne Premier League. Did did you see any changes throughout the night, pace-wise? Uh, to be honest, I couldn't find it all night or all game, but um, <laughs> not, not particularly. It's one of the better carpets going around, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, there's one wider side. Um, as we can see here, this this could be the match winner. He's going to run the jack in the pit here. So here we go on the drive. Got something. Following it in. Oh, well, that's good. Still get shot. They've got shot. They take out the first shot that Warilla held. They've got a two-point lead. And now that is a one-point lead to North Queensland. Halfway through the final end, could not be any tighter. And, uh, the pace, is it any quicker going in either direction? or what Nah, look, think? it is a little bit quicker uh, going back to the club rooms. Probably about a yard. Um, okay. Tick. Yeah. Well, oh, there's a piece of it. There's a touch-up for Rewilla. Now they claim the lead again. <laughs> yeah. Live scoring there in front. Seesawing state of affairs at the minute in this second quarter final to meet Geelong in the semi. I've got to say, Damien's getting the ball away extremely well. 
Yeah, well done. That. I mean, and, and Nathan, this is where the real skill of this game comes in. When you've had the, the, the jack disrupted and you've got to re-align yourself and then home in. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, Damien gets the advantage there. He has three bowls at it, where Corey will have two. He's got to hurry here, hasn't he? Absolutely. It looks like it's going to come up short. You saw the, the drop of the head. I just want to throw it out there, guys. Two-point lead to Warilla. We could have a tie. What happens? Uh, so they all play one bowl. Oh, wow. So this is all, it's like the equivalent of golden point. Yeah. Each get to fire your best shot. Change of hand. If he finds the hole, he's going to get the third shot and a closer third shot. So well done. He's done that too. So, geez, Damien McGee's come up with some big plays in high-pressure moments. He's been incredible. I mean, all four players have been incredible. So it comes down to this. Will Rilla have first shot? North Queensland have second and third. Final delivery for Corey Wedlock. What's the play here, Bushy? Look, he's got to draw it. He's got to draw it. Uh, he can make contact on his own. He likes it. He's just pulled up halfway down the, the rink. He does slip it past. He's left it long. And that's it. The ruse. North Queensland Roos with first, second and third have done what we didn't think was going to be possible. Warilla Gorillas were an 83 to 19 victor over Moama in their preliminary final and they've just gone down in their quarter final to the North Queensland Roos in what was an absolutely stellar match of lawn bowls. Let's head down to Chris Green who's with John Newell and Damien McKee from the North Queensland Roos. Crowd, Damien who? Let me tell you, Damien McGee. Damo, you were the, uh, well, you were not really a surprise, but you were the first picked up in the draft uh, by the Aussie Cool Roos, who the franchise you do own. And mate, I have not seen someone with a bigger smile than you all week, but Dojo had the biggest smiles when you were playing some cracking bowls tonight. Yeah, mate, I'm, um, I'm absolutely stoked to be here with Doge and uh, Mark to, you know, come along with me. It's been awesome. They've, uh, they've really performed very well, so. I'm just happy to be up here and having a, having a crack at it. So, so leading into that game, uh, we've been speaking in commentary. No one with blue bowls has actually won a game tonight. Okay, so you've done that. And the other thing was, I'm not sure if you saw Warilla's first game, but it was impressive. The only thing that was going to beat them was some of the bowls you two were actually displaying. So, Dojo, you must be really happy with the way he's playing, but yourself as well? Mate, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I had a great couple of days. Dee's been burning up, so... Uh skipping well and we're looking forward to the next game and yeah can't complain mate going good which well, just goes to show too because uh, the effort you guys were putting in prior to the event so the days leading up um, you spent a lot of time on the rinks you did spend a lot of time out here on the TV ring so I don't know if you're quietly confident um, but it's working wonders and guys it's only going to be a little bit of a break now you've had a, a fair break because you obviously qualified uh, coming second in your section to get through the quarterfinals the semi-finals though it's only going to be about three games away so go back sit down and relax uh, but look keep those smiles on your face because it's absolutely fantastic well done guys well done to the North Queensland Roos what a performance to knock off the highly fancied Warilla Gorillas and they booked their place in the semi-finals to take on Geelong The UBC is proudly supported by Ryman Healthcare, Henselite, Sports Centre, Audica, Specsavers, Apia, and the Dandenong Club.